kind of reflect on that because you have moved over by hyperbole. Because I have heard you use the phrase, and I've heard uh, I've heard uh, Senator Richard also talk about having a more effective Senate this year. Would you uh, tell me what that means, and if you still have divisions that are going to require Democrats to pass bills? I think we're going to have differences of opinion. I mean, you've got a body of 34 members, and you know, good luck finding unanimity and, and thought. Um, you know, and, and Senator Justice pointed out, it's, you know, the, the issues are more complex than that. And so to just try to identify uh, people by party label I think is too simplistic an approach. Uh, you, you know, we have other policies that we're going to pursue on labor reforms where, uh, you know, Democrats are going to be less interested in that. And, uh, you know, there were elections in November. 70% of the Senate is in Republican hands, uh, almost every part of the state. And uh, we made a commitment to voters uh, that we were going to address uh, certain policies, and so we're pursuing those things that we believe in. And where we can agree with Democrats, and, and where we do agree with Democrats, we're going to work together. And, uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, there's not a point that can be made by the members of the minority party. and. Uh, I always try to listen. That's how I learn things. And so where they can add to the debate, then we'll certainly uh, incorporate their thoughts and, and try at the end of the day uh, to move forward. I think that's what our people want. Tom, you just said the elections have results. The November election also returns statewide office holders who are not members of your party, including the governor. You have supposedly veto-proof majorities in both chambers, but doesn't the fact that Missouri voters put the chief executive as a Democrat modify some of the things that you want to accomplish, that, that some have said you might want to go ahead and force the governor's hand with veto-proof majority? Um, you know, I, I, I've been asked by the you know, press before, you know, having these numbers, what, what items are we going to uh, try to override? You know, before that it was, we had solid majorities and, and we're in the Senate at 76 percent of the Senate. It was what items are we going to be PQ? I really don't, that's not the way that I conduct myself is to say, okay, here's what we're going to shut down somebody's throat. Um, on the you know, workers' compensation legislation last year, the governor vetoed that. Uh, there were not the votes in the House to override that. Uh, veto, and so as we look at workers' compensation, I would suspect that there probably still aren't the votes to uh, override uh, some of the workers' compensation changes. So where we can work with the governor's office, uh, you know, we understand that he's going to be our executive for the next four years, and so uh, if, if we can, uh, in good faith, uh, work something out that that accommodates what we want and uh, has what, what he would like to see in the legislation, then, then in that case, that's probably how we'll move forward. Senator, high profile issue, uh, a lot of attention, guns, public safety. Is the Senate going to address that, tackle it head on, wait and see what comes from somewhere else? What? Yeah. Bills that have been filed you know, will be referred to committee. Um, throughout the process that the, those issues related to the economy and getting people working are, are my primary focus. They're because of uh, you know, what happened in Aurora, Aurora Colorado and, and Sandy Hook. You know, there is a national debate that is occurring uh, on guns and I think that's where that debate should occur, is at the federal level. So I, you know, it's not a priority of mine uh, to move forward on Gun ownership legislation. So a question for Senator governor. Justice, real quick. Um, the uh, House is going to push an armed teachers uh, measure. Um, it has the backing of both the Speaker and the Majority Leader. If that actually passes and comes over to the Senate, can we expect a filibuster? I never say whether we're going to filibuster a bill or not, but I suspect you're going to hear um, from a lot of senators who have some major concerns with that bill. Isn't that allowed by law now? I mean, can't the local school district already allow teachers to carry arms if it chooses? I suspect that's probably the case, but... Um, I think there's a local option to where the school board chooses to adopt that, that they, they could. 
make that decision at the local level. So do we need a new bill? I don't think we do. Senator, the governor made a lot of interim appointments that are awaiting confirmation. Have you spotted any that you see as potential problems? The Republican uh, position for the PSC Commission, uh, as we stated last year, uh, needs to be acted on. And I, I did have a conversation with the governor's office recently where um, I think they hope to have a name for us uh, relatively soon. And so you're going to hold up to the other appointment for that until you get the report. <coughs> let's, let's see what happens in the next few days. Senator Dempsey, you know there's a special election for the 8th Congressional District, we presume, coming up pretty soon here. One of the potential Republican nominees happens to be Lieutenant Governor. So there's been some talk <coughs> about what would happen if Peter Kinder is a nominee in the 8th District who appoints, does someone appoint a replacement? Do you think that the legislature needs to step in and <coughs> clarify what should be done when there's a vacancy in a, a statewide office such as Lieutenant Governor's office? I think our reading of the Constitution and the statute is that the governor does not have the authority to appoint the lieutenant governor. Now, there is not a clear process in statute today to allow for a that vacancy to be filled. So I, I do think members want to address more clearly uh, that statute. What should happen? You know, I, How should it be filled? You know, I'm, my focus is on our economic climate, uh, getting people working priorities. Um, I would say that uh, a special election would be my preference. Last, last, last time, time was but there's a lot that has to happen there. I mean, we don't even have uh, a special election that has been set for the congressional seat. So, you know, there are many things yet to occur, um, of which we'll be all watching. Getting your stomach for right to work. Uh, you know, I've, uh, many of my members would like to see right to work. Uh, they believe that, especially in the area of manufacturing, and I have acknowledged this as well, that it, it impacts Missouri's ability uh, to keep the manufacturing uh, businesses that we have and certainly to, to attract companies. If you talk to site selectors, they will tell you that right to work. Uh, should be a priority for the state of Missouri, but the governor has uh, <coughs> said that he'd veto that legislation and uh, Just the votes are not there to override the objections of the governor. Do, do you think there's any meaning to the fact or any impact on the state seeing some three or four major Republican leadership positions from the people are from the St. Louis area. Do you think that's going to affect how things work in, in the legislature? I, I don't think that there was any, I don't think members looked at where legislators were from when they made those leadership positions. I think they looked for a certain skill set. And this will be the last question, too. I want to go back to, Senator Dempsey was talking earlier about the whole Medicaid situation. You had said in your opening remarks that the Democratic caucus might have a different opinion. So if you can remember what he said 20 minutes ago. Uh, would you respond to, from the Democratic position, what Tom was saying about the feds haven't shown us that they can actually pay for what they're promising, and how does that affect the coming debate? I understand that concern. I don't share the, the, same, um, the same concerns that Senator Dempsey does. I believe uh, that the federal government has made this the law of the land. The courts have upheld it. And the recent election has um, put us on the track now where the Affordable Care Act is currently the law of the land. And it's going to move forward with or without Missouri. And it is the Senate Democrats' position that expansion of Medicaid is, is not only necessary, but it's also going to be good for the state, that it is going to be a job creator that uh, is unprecedented. And so it's something that we're looking forward to continuing to have the conversation with our Republican colleagues. It's a huge education process, and I understand their concerns, and I'm hoping that through the negotiation process, we can come to some place in the middle that uh, frankly reflects what the majority of Missourians want. Thank you very much. Thank you.